I made this crosscut sled about a year ago and it's gotten me by, but it's certainly not great. The tracks are too tall, which makes it rock on top of the table saw, and its base is also way too thick, making it up a full 22 millimeters of cutting capacity. The slot for the blade is far from zero clearance, and to top it all off, the front fence is nowhere near being square to the blade. Basically what I'm saying is, it's a piece of Let's tear it apart. Once I had taken my anger out on the old sled, it was time to start breaking down plywood for the new one. You know, the thing this video is about. I'm using half inch fir plywood for the base because it's what I have in the shop right now and I want to try to make this whole project for material I already have. Once all of the boards were cut, I started sanding the paint off of some 3 quarter inch strips that I wanted to use for the fence. Once they were all sanded down, I got to work gluing them up to get a total fence thickness of about one and a half inches. And in typical fashion, the glue up had some complications and I didn't get any usable footage. So instead, you get to watch me take the clamps off. And these boards had shifted slightly off center while drying, so I squared up a reference edge using the number five before deciding to just start over since this plywood was just too warped. I went with half inch particle board laminated on one side for the new fence, and I won't bore you with another glue up, so it's straight to painting. I decided to paint the outer edge of the fences so that I wouldn't have to look at ugly composite board all the time, and white specifically because I thought it would contrast nicely with whatever it is these boards are covered in. And while the paint on the fences dried, I got to work installing the guide tracks. I pre-drilled and countersunk holes before weighing the base down on top of the table saw and screwing the tracks down. And I purposefully left these tracks too long so that I would be able to cut them off with a flush trim saw and eliminate the risk of accidentally making them too short. A major flaw in my last sled was lack of a handle, which made it a real chore to get out and put away, so I made sure to include one on this sled. I drilled out three one-inch holes with a Forstner bit and then used a rasp to work down the shoulders before using a half round file to smooth out the edges and make it comfortable to hold. And after I got all that done, I took some 80 grit to the base with the power sander and smoothed it all out. And once the base was all sanded up, the last step in assembly was just screwing on the fences. And I did not get these screws in straight, like, at all. But once the fences were in place, all that was left to do was to cut out the zero clearance slot for the blade before I could call this project finished. 